Welcome back. We all know of the horrifying event in 2011 which catapulted New South Wales mining engineer Taria Pitt into the international spotlight. A freakish fire catches her and other runners in an ultramarathon in the Kimberleys. Fast forward nine years and after hundreds of surgeries, operations, including having to learn how to walk and talk again, Taria has walked the Great Wall, she's walked the Incas, she's walked the Kokoda Track and has competed in several Ironman events as well. And in her spare time, she's given birth to two beautiful children and written five books, the latest of which is called Happy and Other Ridiculous Aspirations. It's on the shelves this month. Taria Pitt, it is a great honour to have you on the program. Oh, it's so lovely to speak with you, and thank you so much for having me. Uh, Michael, Sam, how are you guys going? Good, Pretty Taria. good. I met thank you in you Miranda much. in 2014 when you gave a great, a great Australia Day address. Oh, oh my God. Yes, no. I was in Narendra. Yes, I remember that. And of course, you're so Michael. Your, your Michael is from Narendra. Mm. Yes, my, my bloke is from Narendra. Great, great country out there. Hey, Taria, you write Absolutely. in this book, Happy, you say, going through hard times is crucial to our happiness. Um, in mm. your case, you must be the happiest person in the world. You have been through the ringer and back again. <laughs> well, look, I, I like to think that I'm a pretty generally, you know, happy person, but I think part of happiness and part of understanding happiness is that we can't be happy every single day. So just like some days we might feel naturally motivated, naturally excited, naturally enthused, other days we might feel tired, lethargic, stressed, and I think all of those emotions are perfectly valid and, in fact, necessary for the human experience. We need to send Sam this book, I think, because he's a little bit grumpy at the moment. He's not the best of friends with Dan Andrews. Dan Andrews isn't the best of friends of Sam. So is it OK we could send uh, Sam Newman one, a copy? Yeah, look, we'll have to charge him because it's Sam, so we'll charge him double. <laughs> Absolutely, Terry. I wouldn't uh, want anything for nothing. I'm actually... Uh, I have no personal uh, uh, truck against Dan Daniel Andrews as such. He's probably a very nice person, but I'm only just uh, talking about his government. Uh, <laughs> Terry, I, I, you might find this a strange question, but are you... Did you... Are you... Did you have... Um, are you a believer? Did you... Uh, f did, did you have a faith that uh, got you through this, or did... Uh, no, that, that no, 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 not, no, not religious, not religious at all. I don't think things happen for a reason. I think life is a series of circumstances, and I think we really make our own, our own opportunity and our own destinies. But I want to temper all of that by saying, I've been really lucky in life. I've got a great, great family. I had a great upbringing, and really supportive family and friends. I should say, and we sh should tell people just in case they don't know, your mother is Tahitian. She lives in New South Wales now, but she comes from Tahiti, right? Yes, that's right. That's where I got my beautiful hair from. That's right. And, and Michael McCormick, I don't think anyone knows this except people maybe in Wagga, but you're... In your blood, you have some Greek heritage there too, right? Uh... Yes, my uh, grandfather was Greek. Um, it wasn't such a good thing to have a few years ago, as you will recall, Chris, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, yes, my mother's father was... Uh, was Greek. He, he died when mum was very, very young. Poor old mum was uh, orphaned at the age of nine. She lost her dad just just when she was six and, a mu and uh, her mum when she was nine. So uh, uh, it was difficult for her, but uh, no one has faced the obstacles that uh, Cheria has uh, faced, but to come out with, of it smiling, two beautiful children and a, and a story that uh, is inspirational to all Australians. Good Ulla Dulla girl. Yeah, good country girl. Correct, correct. I'll get to what happened on the s south coast earlier this year with you, Taria, in just a second. But, Sam, for everyone, you know, those in Geelong might know this and those who go for the Cats know this, but your father, you were given great athletic genes by your father, Noel or Nogger, right? Yes. Uh, well, yes, I was. Very good tennis player, but um, um, he... Uh, he uh, su suffered uh, a... Um, he, he suffered injury, he got... Polio when he was um, uh, um, middle-aged or a young man, and uh, so he most of his sporting career was um, thwarted. But uh, certainly, I inherited his genes. I wouldn't say I was any great uh, athlete or anything, but it uh, got got me through uh, probably uh, to playing 18 years with the Cats. 
But uh, no matter how much resolve or how much inspiration he gave me, I, I only just think of Cheria about uh, just what she's gone through and wonder, is there, was there any stage when you thought uh, you'd almost give up? Was it just not... You, it was just too hard to go on? Obviously, you didn't think that, but it must have crossed your mind at some stage, surely. Oh, of course. Like, some days I'd feel really good about myself. I'd feel really positive about my recovery. And the next day I'd think, you know what, I'm not cut out for this. This is all too hard. And I think, you know, people always ask me, what was the turning point? Or what, what was that cataclysmic moment where I realised everything would be OK? And I never had that. All I did was just put in the work every single day to make myself better than the day before. So that might mean one morning waking up and doing three laps of the hallway. And then next week, hopefully, if things are going good, I'd be able to do four laps of the hallway. And really, that's how I, you know, that's how I've gotten where I am today. I don't try and look at the big overwhelming picture. Um, I just take it small. I just ask myself, like, what's one small step I could take today that's going to help me get better? Or what could I be grateful for today? Or how could I be of service? It's really interesting because what you've done in this latest book is you've spoken to the scientists, you've even spoken to money people and, and experts right around the world to work out whether there is a journey towards happiness and how you get there. One of your great life lessons that you learnt from this is that it's scientifically proven that if you are involved in an act of kindness towards another person, it is scientifically proven that that can make the giver happier. Yeah, and I really, I really love that because it was, it's something that, you know, our parents always tell us to do something good for something, someone else and we all kind of know that that's what those happy-go-lucky people kind of do. But when I researched it and unpacked it and, and read a couple of, of journal articles, I realised, like, yes, it has been demonstrated, it has been scientifically proven to make us happier. And the reasons for that is that it does a lot for our own self-image. It makes us feel better about who we are. And all of those things help us to be happier. So I really think it's a, it's a really great thing that we can learn and try to remember to to notice people around us and to try and try and do something kind for the people around us. You're a great embracer of the morning, the early morning. You don't think people should pick up their telephone as some of us do first thing in the morning. You want to embrace the day. Well, yeah, because I think that time in the morning, like, it's kind of sacred, sacred time. Your day has just started. And I think... What a lot of people do, and, you know, I'm no different, is we grab our phone and all of a sudden we're sucked into a, a digital vortex of emails and calendar notifications and, and text messages. And, you know, all of a sudden we're thinking about what everyone else wants for their day instead of what we want. So I think if there's anything that people could take out of this conversation, it would be to not look at their phones first thing in the morning, think about what they want for themselves in the morning and try and set themselves up in a happier and more positive way. Yeah, and start at the very beginning yeah. of the day. I love that. So, Taria, tell us what happened when you were in Milton on the south coast of New South Wales at the beginning of the year and those fires came through. Yeah, like that was a really stressful time. So I live on the south coast um, in the town of Ulladulla. We had really horrific fires down where I live. We had fires burning to the north of us, to the west of us, to the south of us. And we're pretty much trapped in our little town. And, you know, neighbours had lost their property, people were out fighting fires. And I felt about as useful as tits on a bull because I wasn't fighting any fires. I wasn't rescuing neighbours from towns by a boat. I wasn't doing any food jobs. I was heavily pregnant with my second son. I had a toddler at home and I was stressed and I was nervous and I, was, I had to really try and keep a lid on my own emotions because once you let that panic genie out of the bottle, you've got zero chance of squashing him back in. And I think during that experience, you've got to ask yourself, like, where was my attention and focus? It was on me. I was obsessing about how this terrible experience and this harrowing experience was affecting me personally. And I really had to flip that around and, you know, try and put my energy and focus onto other people and ask myself, like, what could I do that would be helpful for my community? How but, but could Taria, I give back? But, Taria, that's all well and good, but you almost died at the hands of a grass fire. You were facing other threats. There were fires all around you in that area and the smoke, etc. Given what you've been through, was it? did you have to work out how you would cope? 
No, I didn't work out how. No, I didn't have to work out how I would cope. Uh, I was stressed. I was anxious. I was nervous. I was fearful. It was indeed a very triggering event. But where was all my attention and energy? It was on myself, and it was on how this experience was affecting me. And what I've always done through my recovery is when I get too much in my own head. I turn it outwards. I flick that switch and I ask myself, well, what could I do right now right. to give something back to my community? And it was from that that we created the initiative Spend With Them. I don't know if any of you blokes ever heard of that, but it was a way to connect customers from all around Australia and all around the world to businesses from fire-affected communities. And I think within like a couple of days, we had over 200,000 followers on the Instagram page. We got... A shout out from Kelly Rowland, who's a you know ex ex Destiny Child's band member. Yep. Um, you know the testimonials from the businesses that we profiled were incredible. A business wrote to us and said they made two months worth of income after one of our posts, and people said that they put on more staff to help them pack their orders. Great. So that that whole experience for me, it really crystallised that, especially when we are stressed, fearful, anxious, yeah. scared to try and switch our focus and try and ask ourselves, well, what could I do to give back? What could I do to be of service? And what could I find to be grateful for in this experience? Yeah, I guess that's, that's what I've always done throughout my recovery. Michael, Sam, we, we forget, OK, we've gone through COVID in particular. You've been locked up twice now, Sam, and this will continue. It's frustrating. But at the beginning of the year, we just got off the worst drought we've had in about 100 years and then straight into these horrible fires... We were, we were, you know, still left to grieve, especially those who were involved, and then COVID came. Yeah, we, we've had a, well, we've had a terrible we... year, but I say again, Australians are so resilient. They've done what they're supposed to do as far as quarantine and self-isolation and downloading the app, but, but uh, they've actually looked out for each other. That's what Australians do best. They look out for each other, and as uh, Terea has just said, I mean, her... Uh, psychologically, she's probably the strongest person in our nation. But yeah. uh, to then reach out, to have that Shop Locally campaign, to encourage others to do it, I mean, it's a, such an inspirational story. Go you. I want to ask you a question, the three of you, the same question. 2021, Taria, what are you hoping to achieve? I know you've probably got 65 Ironman events to compete in and another child to have and all the usual things that you do. But what are you looking forward to the most about 2021? Yeah, I guess that all depends on what, what we can do and what we can't do. I know for this year I had really big plans for myself, as I guess a lot of people around the world did, as a lot of Australians did. I was going to do a marathon, I was going to do travelling, I was going to, you know, do a lot of awesome things. Um, none of that has eventuated, which has been, you know, really good for me in retrospect. I live in a really beautiful part of Australia. So for next year, I'm looking forward to doing more writing. I love writing. It's, it's one of my many passions. And spending time with my family, as Great. well as watching the Chris Smith and Friends show, of course. <laughs> Thank you very much. You write beautifully, may I add. You write beautifully. Uh, Michael McCormick, can you get this country back on track for us? A vaccine. That's what we need. Freely available to uh, all Australians and indeed our Pacific Islands friends. Uh, better health, more hope and greater happiness. That's what 2021, I'm hoping, is going to bring. And Sam, apart from getting into politics next year, what are you hoping for 2021? <laughs> Playing golf? Well, well, look, hope is essential, but it ain't a strategy. I hope this government will have some sort of paradigm or plan going forward rather than just hoping things will get better. You've ended where we started. That's beautiful, mate. Taria Pitt, Michael McCormick, Sam Newman, thank you to the three of you for coming on the program. Thank Thanks you so much. much. Thanks so much. And really nice to be here with you guys as well. Good to have you with us. Likewise. I think that show's just about a keeper. I hope you enjoyed it as well.